one of the very many unique features of crowdfunding. Um, you can think about it as being a digital manifestation of charitable contribution or entrepreneurial finance, venture capital, these types of things. Historically, if you look at the charitable contribution literature and economics, um, there is a great deal of work that's looked at this notion of social information. So how does my ability to see what other people are giving impact what I'm going to give? And it's tended to be studied either in lab settings or using one-off field experiments. And there's been a wide array of contradictory evidence supporting two main outcomes that are in direct contrast to one another. One is that people give in kind, they cooperate. So when you give a certain amount of money, I want to look fair, I want to look like I'm behaving the same way and it's adhering to social norms, so I'm going to give a lot, that amount of money as well. The other result is substitutive behavior, so crowding out effects. If I see that you've already gotten X dollars, I may feel that you don't need my money as much, therefore I withhold that. And there's evidence for both in the literature, so we wanted to understand in this particular context of crowdfunding, how does the social information impact people's contribution activity? So we found evidence actually of this crowding out effect in this setting. So I mentioned the, the reinforcing and the substitutive behavior. We found substitutive behavior. So the crowd is appearing to be fair. So they're reallocating their money across campaigns based on where it's most needed. So if I see a spike in fundraising to this particular campaign, the money ends up getting withheld by the crowd subsequently, dragging out as a result, the fundraising durations. There's this interesting trade-off that we find evidence of. So on the one hand, if I have substitution behavior, it's going to drag out the fundraising. As a result, it has this counterintuitive benefit after the fact where I've got this longer opportunity to build awareness and buzz in the marketplace. And the way we studied that, we looked at how, how frequently tweets are being issued, sharing the page. And then we also, of course, looked at consumption in terms of readership after the fact. So the extended funding duration that comes from substitutive behavior actually ends up being beneficial in terms of demand for the product once it's produced. So this has an interesting uh, implication if you think about it. On the one hand, if I am an entrepreneur that has this big established following already, I'm a serial entrepreneur or I work for a big established video game studio or something like this, building awareness may not be as big of a deal for me because I may get it automatically. In that instance, the substitution is actually less desirable for me because I want faster funding durations. I just want to hit my target and get out there. However, if I'm a first-time entrepreneur, or I'm a first-time author, or I've never done this before and nobody knows who I am, buzz and awareness are a really big thing. And in those instances, it makes more sense. And first of all, the substitutive behavior is more desirable because it will lengthen the, the process of funding and create more opportunity for buzz and awareness to build. At the same time, because the campaign organizers can explicitly control the funding durations when they set up their campaign, it makes sense to actually specify a longer funding duration for those people.